Hi guys, so today we're going to be uh, going over how you can bring a live video into Adobe Fresco so that you can rotoscope it. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to need both Fresco and we're going to need access to Adobe Photoshop on a computer or on a full computer in order to do this. All right, we'll start by clicking on Fresco here and creating a new document. Uh, I'm just going to select Full HD as my size. We start with a layer uh, and a a white background and what I'm going to do is click the motion tab button in the bottom right hand corner and that makes that layer into a motion layer which we can start animating on so if I drew on this layer uh, as you can see I could draw the number one and that's one on one frame if I hit the plus I have a second frame I can do two and then I can do three frames three frames is fine uh, the idea is we're going to be uh, replacing those frames with actual video uh, stills that we bring in. Anyway, at this point, I'm just going to name my document, and we're just going to call it Walk Cycle. And we're going to hit Save, and then we're going to get out of that. And then, as you can see, it's syncing to the cloud. Uh, we're using the cloud to get the files on and off of our iPad. On the Mac, I have brought this video over from my phone, which has me walking across the stage here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and Command-T to trim that in quick time, as you can kind of see, uh, just so I'm not bringing in more than I need. Um, trimming it the in point there and the out point so I've got that trimmed and now I've got about five seconds of video I'm going to go ahead and command s to save it and save it as uh, walking man on my desktop here uh, so now I have a video to bring into Photoshop let's go into Photoshop and notice that the walk cycle um, PSD and then C for um, I'm not sure what that means but that's the uh, fresco uh, file uh, is available. If I want, I can go ahead and click on it, and you'll see uh, a fresco file with a video layer actually shows up as a folder called motion layer, and you can see the numbers one, two, three, right here, uh, in the order one being on top, then two, then three. So this is the first, second, and third frame. Um, what we're going to do is replace these three uh, layers here, pixel layer, motion layer, motion layer, with uh, frames from our video that we're going to set up. But we're going to need a new document, so let's go ahead and File, New. Uh, we're going to make it 1080p as well, so it's identical in size. Uh, and now I've got a new document. Uh, so in order to set up and bring in a piece of video, if you're not already in the workspace, I'm in the motion workspace. I'm going to reset it so you can see it here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a new video layer, um, new blank video layer. Uh, that's going to allow me to set my timeline frame rate. If I don't have that, I won't be able to get to this uh, area here. And I'm going to set it to 12. This way there's only 12 frames per second. In other words, there's not a lot of, video, uh, a lot of um, frames so that I don't have to do a lot of drawing. So I'm going to set that to 12 frames per second. And you can see I've got a five second timeline here. Uh, the next step is to bring in that video, so I'm going to go to Layer, Video Layer, just like before, but this time I'm going to bring in a file. Uh, I'm going to find that file, Walking Man MOV, and because I made it 12 frames per second, it will only import that video at 12 frames per second, as you can kind of see here. Now, uh, currently this video is too big because I took it with a 4K uh, video, so what I'm going to do is transform this layer, Command-T, uh, it's going to convert it to a smart object, but that still will allow me to then uh, transform it. And I'm going to just use the width height thing up here to kind of scale it down until it quite until it fits in the space. Now you notice that when you transform something in Photoshop, uh, at least on a video layer, it stops being visible. But when you hit the return key, you can see it. And now I can see myself walking, as you can see here. Uh, if you wanted this bigger, you can make it bigger by Command-T. You could transform it again, and this time it won't go away if you transform it. I don't know why Photoshop does that, but it does. There we go. Uh, or you can make it smaller uh, because you want it to be exactly the right size. So that's up to you. So again, you can transform that layer uh, in order to use it, and then when you're done, hit Return. Uh, at this point, I have no more need for that video layer I made, nor the background. So I'm going to delete both of those by throwing them in the trash. Okay, now we have uh, something that we want to convert to, uh, to frames or to layers. And what the way we do that 
is I'll just put my playhead at the beginning here and I'm going to click on the, lay, uh, the little uh, area here and I'm going to go to convert frames and I'm going to flatten frames into clips. When I do that, it's going to take each one of these frames at 12 frames per second and it's going to create a layer, one layer for each individual image uh, that is a frame. We'll wait for that to happen. It's also going to give me some slop. The layer 2 will be left over at the bottom. So you notice 55 is at the top and layer 2, which is what we used, is at the bottom and it's hidden. So we're going to throw layer 2 away because we don't need it. Now, the only problem so far is that all these frames are in the opposite order. Uh, we want 0 at the top, 1 at, below that, 2 below that. So there's an easy way to do this. We shift click from frame 0. We select that. Go to the top and hold the shift key down, select all the frames here, and we go up to layer, arrange, and then we reverse the layers. And you'll notice now the frame zero is at the top, then one, two, and three. Great. At this point, what we want to do is take all these guys and bring them into our walk cycle video here, right? Uh, so we want to put them into this motion layer folder. Uh, a couple ways you can do that. I you could just take all these frames, put them into a folder like this, and just move this aside and take that folder and just drag it into this area. When you do that, it'll put the folder someplace, like inside of the motion layers, which is where it is now. Uh, but now you can open up the folder and take all these files by shift selecting and then actually put them, oops, uh, shift selecting and actually put them into the motion layer folder with frame zero at the top. I'm going to scroll down. I don't need the group anymore. Get rid of that. Don't need this pixel layer anymore. Could delete that. Delete this layer. And finally, I could delete this last layer. I should have had it not show again. I don't even need the background if I don't want it, but I'm going to leave it. And so what we have now is the same uh, walk cycle fo um, fresco file, but this time we have all those images here, and you can see they're, they're just layered sequentially, frame one, two, three. And you can see, uh, if you look, the little image of me walking across. Now, I've done this for up to 245 frames, and it works. All right, now the last thing I'm going to do is go ahead and save this. So file, save. It's saving it to the cloud. So when I click away from this, uh, you'll see I can click out. And I don't need this anymore, so I can close this up. Um, but you'll see in the cloud, it is in fact saved, it has like a check mark. That means that if I open it now, and we're going to go to Fresco and see what we've got. Okay, so we're back on the iPad and we're going to open up Adobe Fresco. And you can see that uh, currently the 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 movie is synchronizing because we have just filled it with 55 more uh, images. So it just takes a second for it to, to do that. We can wait. And then what we're going to do is click on it. It'll uh, open up. And what you'll notice right away is we still have a motion document, but now we have the actual video itself um, that we can use as a layer to uh, to an essence trace or rotoscope. So the way I would go about doing that is taking this layer here and locking it so that it can't change, adding a new layer and making that a motion layer just by hitting the plus button. And now uh, just walking through frame by frame and using the brush tool and then just drawing over um, the rotoscoped elements uh, as needed, just like you would normally do in any rotoscope document.